Hi again, welcome to the garage, I'm Pierre. This time, I, it's going to be very basic. Basic electronics, basic uh, machining and mechanics. I need to uh, bring my, uh, let's see, <laughs> wireless microphones. I got some body packs here, I got a few of those, and I got on my pole some receivers. They all need to go from four receivers to one output to be able to uh, mix them down to the camera. This is Electronics 101 because it's very basic, very simple. And it's uh, Mechanics 101 too because, you know, making holes in a little uh, cabinet like this is very simple too. But you can achieve pretty, uh, pretty good results with very simple tools. I'm going to be doing my layouts with height gauges. I'm, I'm using the digital one there, but if you don't have a digital, this uh, simple vernier scale height gauge, excellent. This uh, gauge two, excellent. You'll need a square block to lean your parts against if they're not exactly regular. Little hand scales. You'll need a vernier like this. This is my first one, by the way. Just about, well, it's must be about 40 years old. Mint shape been taken care of all the time. The only problem with those uh, with age is you can't see the you can't see the scale very well and it takes you a long time to interpret the scale and make out the little lines in there. So uh, for the simpler projects I got this cheap one between 10, 10, 15, 20 dollars. You can get decent ones, reliable and breaks down, throw it in the garbage. Get another one. You don't you won't cry about it. Simple, ordinary square, hammer, center punch. Try to make sure that this punch is uh, well sharpened and keep it sharpened. If you want to uh, do decent stuff, scribe. That's about all you need. Maybe uh, get technically advanced and get a calculator. But uh, let's proceed. Let's, let's see how we can manage pretty simple projects. And the bigger tools I'm going to be using today is a drill press. You can even do the holes in the, uh, <laughs> just a normal, uh, normal drill like this, this hand drill. That will do too. Having many uh, wireless receivers is fun. Different microphones and everything. The problem is to uh, connect four of those receivers like these kinds of plugs to the input of the camera which use this kind of plug and this has to be mixed you can't just uh, put the wires together that doesn't work so I've got this little uh, it's not a casting it's uh, it's a molding aluminum molding they're they're pretty well made it's made by a Canadian company it's Hammond company I like those little boxes and they're not very expensive like maybe I think three dollars for a box like that little potentiometers to set the volumes of each channel the uh, potentiometers will be insulated from each other, you know, the, um, how can I call that, the outputs of the receivers will be insulated with uh, insulating, insulating resistors, and pretty simple, it's passive, I'm not going to be uh, doing anything active with ICs or any, uh, anything of that sort, so I'm putting the uh, potentiometers, the grommets to keep the wires from wearing out on the surface you know, the um, the walls themselves and that's uh, that's about it simple enough I'll, I'll be doing some outlines and uh, a little bit of machining and uh, something something clean will come out of this before we start making measurements on this just uh, take note that when you when you get a casting you get a molding or whatever be be sure that uh, you take into account that the facts that uh, the walls aren't like you see there, the side wall is not perpendicular with the other surfaces. This would uh, impair the, uh, you know, the uh, taking out or the removing the mold. That wouldn't be that wouldn't be good. See this this time is the bottom. And to in order to make my lines properly, I'll be holding this against a um, right angle block here. You know, and it's gonna make my lines pre precisely at the right uh, right place according to this part there which is wider 
Now I'd like to get the height of that box. Same thing because the uh, you know, these sides and these sides are all uh, a little bit angled. Oh, I re I reset this thing at uh, zero. Let me get the height of this. It's not a super precise project. That it doesn't have to be within uh, you know thousands or something. Eh. Let's see. Uh, let's see what we're reading there. <laughs> Camera's in my way. I can't reach it. Okay. Okay. Four inches. 422. There you go. Get this here. Metric. 112.33 millimeters. We'll divide that in half and we'll make a center line. There we have uh, same principle. We'll get the uh, camera's right in my pretty much in my way. Half there. I want to make a uh, Half on this side there too. Oops. Solid, yeah. And just to kind of double check. If not, it's easy to uh, just get the middle of this. There we go. get the line at the same same place all oh, within uh, very close <laughs> and now we'll make this R0 to um, let's say we start to make the uh, measurements from the center we want this uh, box to be centered so <laughs> I got my little paper here let me get the inch one we got all the holes easy to do let's do the um, you got the potentiometer here which has the main hole there and there's a little tab there to stop it from turning we gonna make another little uh, spot for this this little tab and that 390 thousandths um, once I got those this is good enough there you go it doesn't need a big marking just a little place for a center punching after this we got the uh, height there to determine and since we, uh, not this one, this one, zero, 1.23, I'm going for half the total cabinet with the, the little box with the cover. I have to do some punching. One little trick I use often when I want maximum position on the, uh, on the on the punch like this I will use a very sharp punch and just press it very lightly like this it does a, it will do the job this is the other the other one this is an, in order to just make a little mark enough to make it easier with the uh, bigger punch later I can also use a little bit just very light tap it's pretty much easier to place a very pointy punch like this than to point something like a very uh, very blunt nose punch there you go I'll give you a close up of this Let's see if my eyes are still good I guess if, as we get older eyesight not getting as good and not easy to align big punches or something very close this when I punch with the very fine, let's say, uh, pointed punch, I mean the the lines are pretty well, the intersection are pretty well respected there. It's uh, it's pretty clean. This one, this one, the rule, the uh, scale on top there is one hundredth of an inch per division. There, these are uh, half millimeter uh, 
just to give you some kind of a reference on the uh, kind of scale that there is. Okay, now that we got a decent uh, starting place, we can just drop our bigger punch in there, and it will like center itself. Get it there with a the smaller punch that you see, and like you see better around this punch when you punch then you would see trying to match with this one but once the little dip is done this one is locked in there and they will do a nice punch let me uh, <laughs> something like this and now you see that looking at the punch marks see how well they're centered that just after I did the um, imprint with the bigger punch it's easy with this to uh, start with the starting drill and the press drill. You don't even need a very precise milling machine for this if you get projects that need some certain amount of precision. Uh, you can still use press drill or less precise tooling for uh, getting a pretty decent result. If you want to make it easy for yourself to uh, follow the dimp hole that uh, you made with a punch, get, get a drill with a good grind, even grind and uh, not too, <laughs> let's say not too warmed up. Okay, now when we uh, get into the whole the dimple from the uh, the punch, try to center the drill on this. If it doesn't move, it's centered. Make the hole. The drill will center itself. Got the hole done. This is the pre-hole. This one here is the final hole. You just adjust until it uh, doesn't move anymore. It there we go. It centers itself. You see the drill doesn't slip. Gets in there perfectly. That's the moment. That's it. Every second hole I said. There we go. That's it. All the holes are made. It's like who says that every precision job has to be done on a drill, uh, on a milling machine, or very accurate uh, instruments. You can, you can do some pretty accurate stuff just on the drill press as long as you take certain precautions to uh, start with. Uh, I tend to lose a lot of stuff, so I'll uh, take one precaution and maybe uh, avoid myself some bad words. Put them back in the little bag in case I know what's going to happen. Now a little bit of care to do with this is a uh, little bit of deburring. Always better. Deburring tool normally lo lower speeds. Always better. This is done for this side. The inside there is easy. The other side there is not that easy. One method I use for the, the inside the, when it's like this on tin metal, I, I just insert my tool in this direction. I know there are tools to do the inside, but I don't have it. I mean, I didn't, uh, I didn't get friends with the people at Noga yet, so that's too bad, but it doesn't matter. I mean, I can do without that. There we go. Uh, important to do some uh, deburring on those because the uh, the grommet will be kind of a maybe on the sharp uh, edges, and it's not it's not great for a grommet. Uh, this is done. Always forgetting this one. There we go, and the other direction inside. 
if you uh, angle yourself good, you uh, make a good uh, good job on the inside. Uh, you check it out with your finger, it's good. And that's about it. Hey, nice fun job entering some grommets in there. A very broad screwdriver, nothing sharp. And push them in there. There we go. Most of it's in there. Mm, that's it. Nicely done. Okay, got the insulation off. I'm going to twist the wires. This is the ground. After this, I'm going to put some shrinkable tubing and uh, make it so it's insulated that doesn't run around the box. The, you know, live uh, live wires. This is going to be a ground wire, but you don't want it to touch any lives or anything useful. There we go. Now I got some shrinkable tubings on the uh, on the ends that will insulate and uh, protect. A special gun for shrinkable tubing. You can do that with matches and torches, but it not as good as this, though. I would say. That's hot. There we go. Let's make a clean job. Let's try just welding this to uh, watching through the camera. I don't know if I not not the greatest though. There we go, one done. The other one done. Eh, not too bad. Okay, this is the final result. Oh, just about. The four potentiometers are inside. The four inputs that will go into my um, receivers. The ground to go to the body of the uh, case there will have to be screwed on, the screws. The insulating resistors, the output goes to the camera itself. And that's about it. Final result, not too bad. Whatever channel I use, I just put up the potentiometer, those the uh, amount of sound I want, and that's, uh, that's gonna be pretty clean.